right, you ready, Matthew? Big round of applause for Matthew. Thanks. All right, so it's the spring of 1986, and Coach Cronin has decided we need two more pole vaulters for our high school track team. We have Jimmy Dean, he's our one pole vaulter. And Jimmy is a senior, and he's a stoner, but he's the best pole vaulter in all of Massachusetts in 1986. He can vault 17 feet and win every meet. But some meets are called relays, and in those meets you need to have three competitors. And all of those competitors in the pole vault need to score opening height, or nothing counts. Opening height is seven feet, six inches. And so at every one of those meets throughout Jimmy's entire career, we've never scored any points. So Coach Cronin decides he's gonna fix it, he's gonna find two new pole vaulters. And so he takes all the mediocre sprinters, and all the mediocre long jumpers, and I qualify him both times. <laughs> and he brings us all down to the pole vault pit to have us pole vault. Now, pole vaulting is an interesting sport. It requires strength and speed and precision, but mostly you just have to be crazy. You take a pole about 12 feet long, you hold one end of it at the end of a runway. You run as fast as you possibly can for 18 steps. During the last three steps, you raise the pole over your head, you jam the other end of the pole into a metal box set into the ground. You throw your feet directly into the air. You throw your head directly to the ground. You pull back on the pole, and theoretically, it throws you over the bar. I did not vault that first day. I went left, wrenched my knee, and literally ended up in a gully. But the pole was still in my hand. I had not let it go. And therefore, I became a pole vaulter. Two of us didn't let it go, and so that day, the pole vaulting team, probably the best named pole vaulting team ever, of Jimmy Dean, Jack Daniels, and Matthew Dix was born. And so fast forward to the first relay. I've been practicing for about six weeks with Jack, and I'm occasionally reaching opening height. And I know all the pressure's on me. Jack is a year older than me, and I want to be good. Because the real secret to team sports is you want to beat your opponent, but you, what you really want is your teammates to like you. And the only way you can get them to like you is to either perform at a very high level or to perform higher than the mediocre people on your team. I cannot perform at a high level, so my goal is to beat Jack and hope that he is mediocre. And I don't like Jack to begin with. He's better looking than me, he's faster than me. And his name is Jack Daniels. And my name is Matthew Dix. And people look at me and go, oh, D-I-X? And I go, no, it's like more than one penis. And I'd like to complain about my name, but my father, hand to God, is named Leslie, and he goes by Les Dix. And I have two, I have two Uncle Harolds and they both go by Harry Dix. So I don't complain about my name very often. However, in pole vaulting, there's a lot of waiting. You wait to vault, and so they need to let you know, because there's stoners like Jimmy who aren't paying attention, and so the way they let you know is they, the official will announce, Smith up, Jones on deck, Peterson in the hole. And so for me, I would hear, Dix up, Dix on deck, Dix in the hole breaks your concentration when you're getting ready to vault. So I had a lot going against me that day. So I, uh, Dix was up, he was at the end of the runway, and by some miracle of miracles, I made opening height on my first vault. And at that moment, I realized I was gonna be Mr. Dependable. I was gonna be better than Jack no matter what. And when Jack missed his first vault, I can't tell you how good I felt. And then Jack missed his second vault, and for a moment, I thought the sun had come out and shined upon me. And then I realized that if Jack makes his third vault, he becomes Mr. Clutch. And Mr. Clutch is damn well better than Mr. Dependable. <laughs> this son of a bitch, I believed at that moment, had set it up so that all the drama and all the attention would be on him. And on his third and final attempt, he would achieve opening height, stealing my win not allowing me to be better than Mew Yoka. And so Jack ran down that runway, and I begged, I pleaded with all my mental energy. I just hoped that Jack would lose. I didn't hope that the pole would break, because then he would have an excuse. I wanted a bad plant. I wanted something bad to happen, and it did. On his way up, Jack's foot kicked the bar, and he failed. And I was happy. 
And then something <laughs> terrible happened. My team won the meet. And they won by like 50 points. And Jack missing the pole, missing the bar, it didn't matter anymore. Nobody cared because we beat the team by 50 points. What I wanted was for us to lose by one point. I wanted to step onto that bus being the guy who cleared opening height and everyone staring at Jack and knowing that I was better than Jack. But because we had crushed the team so badly, nobody paid any attention to me. And so I learned three very important lessons that day. Number one, although the world does revolve around me, not everyone notices. I'm sort of trapped like, I'm like the sun in this pre-Copernican world where everyone refuses to acknowledge that it revolves around me. And I'm just gonna have to accept that. Number two, I learned that while I've got all my little mind games going, trying to become better than mediocre, everybody else has a mind game too. And some of them actually have noble mind games, like I wanna win and I want our team to do well and I wanna support our teammates. And while they're doing all that crap, nobody pays attention to the rest of the mind games. So while you're thinking that the world is revolving around you, it really is only revolving around me and everybody else isn't paying attention. And the third and really the most important lesson is you don't get attention in life by being the best of the rest. You really need to be the best of the best. And that day and for many, many subsequent days, I was not. Thank you. Matthew Dix. Mm. That was awesome. That was, oh my God. That guy should be like a life coach or something. I felt better after that. I was like, yes, you are so right and you're totally cool about it. Uh, another round of applause for Matthew. How's it going?